thank you, Will. Um, like Will said, thanks for being here because um, I'm assuming you didn't have to be here and you're here by choice unless you know, put the hammer down and said you've got to be here. Oh, I'm not sure, I won't ask. Um, but I mean, this was the brainchild of Sam and I know Sam reached out, we reached out to a number of associations and I guess the reason behind a lot of this was we, we were fortunate enough to go away um, in January to a number of different tours um, and watch a lot of our best kids or what's deemed to be our best kids compete um, in various tournaments around the country. And, and Sam did a, Sam and Curtis both did an unbelievable job of, of making all of these observations on, on the kids that we coach at the pointy end. Um, and what they found was there was a lot of things that had done really well, um, but then there are some really basic fundamental things where we're, there it's quite evident that there are deficiencies in the kids that we coach. Um, so the purpose behind a lot of these clinics that we're doing um, this year, early in the year during the rep season is well, how to teach skill. Um, at a young age so that when they get to 16s and 18s they've got a sound foundation that you can start building on top of. Um, so the cool thing is I'm coaching under 14s for the first time and when I looked at it it was like well this is going to be a great opportunity because all I'm going to have to worry about is coaching skill. So a part of this I'll go through like how it all worked for me in trying to map out well how am I going to figure this season out um, and then how I went about coming up with drills and creating small-sided games and whatever it may be to develop those skills. Now, the first thing was, and, and I think this is unbelievably important, and, and I stole this off a Canadian coach, his name's Mike McKay, um, is establishing context before you go about even thinking about what you're gonna do um, with your team. And the way he broke it down, like this wasn't as clean for me when I first started talking about it or thinking about it was, who and why equals what and how. So your who is, well, who are you coaching? And the why is, well, why they're playing. And that'll determine what you do and how you go about doing that, right? So for me, it was all, I'm coaching an under 14 girls team. And when they were in under 12s, they won a game. And I think it was the last game of the season and not by very much. So without really seeing them identify, well, they must, there must be a deficiency in overall skill. So for me, that kind of outlined the context of what I was kind of walking into. And then the next thing was I had to define my purpose. So, well, what's the purpose of this season going to be? Is it going to be to get our team to the under 14 club championships? Is it going to be to go to the Melbourne Classic? Is it going to be state championship, Metro finals, all of that nice stuff, right? Um, it actually wasn't, it was, all right, well, I want to develop players so that they have a solid foundation of skill that they can then go into 16s and 18s and not really have to worry about it as much. So everyone can use their left hand, everyone can use their right hand. They all understand how to shoot. So the way I broke it down is we have what we call a super six um, for skill development. And these, they're just six skills. So shooting, um, how to hold the ball for me is pretty important, what type of a stance you maintain and take, um, what a follow through looks like. I mean, I made it very simple for under 14 girls because it's a very complex task or skill to execute. Um, so there's shooting, then there was dribbling. So well, how do we dribble the ball? Why do we dribble the ball? Right, that's pretty important. Passing, um, basketball's a possession game. There's only so many possessions in a game. Um, and if you turn it over all the time, you don't really get a lot of possessions or opportunities to score. So how to pass um, and why we pass and the decision making behind passing. And a lot of that is, I think, is done through small sided games. Pivoting, who watched the final four today or the championship game? Yeah, I watched it at work, guilty. Um, don't tell you the score. What I can say is they're very good at pivoting. And I think it's one of those skills that doesn't really get spoken about a lot but all the best players are really good pivoters. Um, so I, so I associate pivoting and footwork as a similar thing. Um, and we'll do a lot of pivoting with these guys today. Um, so that's the other skill, right? Then there's one-on-one -on -one defense. So how to establish a stance, how to maintain a stance, how to stay in front of the ball in the back court and the front court. And then I guess from there, giving kids the tools to be able to come up with a strategy with one-on-one -on -one defense. And simple stuff like, well, which hand do they like to dribble with? Are they left hand dominant, right hand dominant? 
if they're right hand dominant, well how do we cut their right hand off and make them go left? So with the 14 girls that I've got at the moment, we've started using very simple phrasing and we call it lock left. So if I'm guarding you, I'm gonna jump to my left and I'm gonna line up my, sh my nose with whatever shoulder is in front of me when I go to my left. Now if you try and dribble right, well I'm locking you off going right because you'll drive into my chest trying to make you go left hand. So we use that, right? And then we build on that. So are they shooter, driver, and then how do we play out of that? And then the last one is decision making. All right, so I think that's pretty important. Like at the end of the day, you've got all this great skill, um, but when you play a game, you've got to know when the right time to shoot the ball is, the right time to drive the ball, and the right time to pass the ball. And the reason why I think that is all important, once again, possession game. Well, if you turn the ball over all the time, or you don't make the right decision a lot of the time, you don't really give yourself a good chance to compete against the opposition. And for me, the best way to develop decision making is to make sure that majority of what we do at practice has some sort of a game-like context, right? Which then leads me into how I develop skill. So I've got what we call block practice, and I'll explain all of this. So block practice, then I've got guided defense, or what I, uh, otherwise known as BDT, so basketball decision-making training, which I've stolen from another guy in Canada, his name's Chris Oliver, I'd look him up if you get a chance, um, then into random play or small-sided games. So block practice would be doing something in isolation. So if we're talking about offensive footwork, which these guys will do, you know, I might be trying to teach an onside step. So if I'm dribbling with my right hand, I'm going to step with my right foot as I dribble with my right hand. Cross step, if I'm dribbling with my right hand, would be stepping with my left foot. So I would do that in isolation early if it's a new skill so they can get a feel for what it's like. So for the girls that I, I'm coaching this year, they didn't know what an onside or a cross step was. So I can't just be like, oh, we're going one-on-one -on -one, straight into it and everything we're playing out of is a cross step because they don't understand stance, they don't understand what a pivot foot is, they don't understand what a long and low stance is when they put the ball on the floor, because they've never done it before. So we started with block practice, and that was the same with me with shooting and all of these other skills, other than decision making, all block practice. Then guided defense would be what we call or know as dummy defense. So if it's one-on-one -on -one from the wing with dummy defense, and we'll do a variation of it with these guys, I'm the dummy defender on the ball, someone drives it, um, and I'm just kind of staying in front, but I'm not really guarding them with great intensity. So now they can match the feel of what it feels like to execute a certain skill with what it's like to execute that skill with someone beside you, or someone in front of you, or someone behind you, whatever it may be, depending on the situation. And then random play and one-on-one -on -one is, well, that's what it is. It's we're playing one-on-one -on -one now, we're playing two-on-two, -two. we're playing three-on-three. -three. And I think with young kids, I want to get into that as quick as possible. So although it might not seem that way in the clinic when we do the block practice with these guys, with the girls that I coach, we're not really spending a lot of time in doing skills in isolation. It's like, all right, let's get a feel for what it's like to do this footwork. Let's get a feel for what it's like to pivot, pass, boom, let's get a defender in whether it's you know, dummy defense or an advantage-disadvantage situation, I want to get some sort of game-like context involved in the activity as quick as possible. And I don't play a lot of five-on-five. Five. Play a lot of three-on-three, three, play a lot of two-on-two, two, play a lot of one-on-one. On one. So for me, it's like, well, we're time poor, right? We're all time poor. We get two trainings a week. It's not a lot when you think about it. Hour and a half, is that right? Hour and a half, two times a week, three hours. 10 kids, you've got a joint session, so there's 20 kids, and if you've got reserves, how many repetitions can you actually get in with that amount of time if you do things in isolation? Probably not a lot, right? So my thing is, meaningful repetitions as much as possible. If we play small-sided games, more people are gonna get more touches of the ball, more opportunities to practice certain skills. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Now it might change. I don't know, there might be some new research that says, Sean, you're an idiot. That's not the best way to do it. Um, but that's where my mind is at at the moment, and it's a lot of fun. And I never really get that question anymore of, well, when's the game? When are we playing the game? Because everything we do is a game, eventually, and sometimes pretty quick. 
all right? Um, now, with any of this stuff, if you've got a question, please ask. And I'm, I know Will's got some food after the session and, and I'll come up as well. And I'm happy to talk about any of these things, but please ask if you've got something because this is about you guys, not me. A little bit about the kids, all right, but it's about the coaches. Um, so other than that, we'll get straight into it. So just give me, uh, just give me a pair, like size pair, all right? Now, I'm just gonna quickly go through some warm-up drills or warm-up games. Um, if any of you do, don't need a ball, so just come out, you can do this right in front of the coaches. They're gonna have a bit of a laugh. Um, if you do early morning stuff, or they've just had a long day at school, and you walk into the gym and you get that feel like, God, I've got, I've got this schedule for my warm-up, but I just don't really know if they're ready to go. Well, I, got, I just I made up and stole a whole bunch of drills that I call wake-me-up drills or wake-me-up games. Um, so the first one I stole off Pat Hunt, um, and I just call it Pat Hunt High Fives. So you guys are gonna face each other, right? And you're gonna have your hands up, right? And when I say right, you're gonna try and high five your partner's right hand with your right hand as quick as possible. So show me what that looks like, right. Good, right? And then when I say left, left. Good, okay? So it would start, now it's good. And, and this is the other thing and I forgot to mention, Whatever we do at practice, when it gets into a warm-up, I want to make everything as competitive as possible to set the mood. We're here to compete and apply great effort early. All right, and this is somewhat competitive. There's no scoring, but it's somewhat competitive. Ready? Left, left, right, left, right, 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 left, left. All right, good. Now, the next progression, if I say both, both, both hands, high five, all right? Both, left, left, right, Left, both, left, right, right, both. Good, all right. Next one. I say knees, you gotta to touch the outside of your partner's knees. Just gotta go and touch them, all right? Both, left, left, right, both, left, knees. All right, and then the last one, and some kids get weird about this, you'll just have to get a feel for your group. If I say ears, you gotta to touch your partner's earlobes. All right, okay, ready? Knees, left, both, right, ears. Anyway, you get the gist, right? Now, the next one, so just give me another two. So you guys stay up here. Go one, uh, we need two basketballs. Quick, so any two, like and like. Gotta get the ball things. All right, now just face, so you're in pairs. Like, let's just go one person in line with just kind of step back so all the coaches can see. So you're in line with me, someone else. So jump in here next to him, all right? And then you two face them, all right? Stand about a meter away. So now get in line with me, all right? Put the basketball between the two of you. All right, so similar game. So I'm gonna yell out either heads, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, ball. Whatever I yell out, you've got to touch with two hands. If I say head, hands on heads. Hips, and then the moment I say ball, it's whoever can get the ball the quickest. All right, so I stole this off Angus Burke. I don't, I'm sure he stole it off someone, but like I said, a lot of this stuff is all stolen. All right, so ready? Stance, show me a basketball stance. Knees, head, hips, ankles, knees, ball. Good, go, we go first to three. Knees, head, Shoulders, hips, ball. Oh. Knees, ankles, ball. Oh, Let's go, and again. Ankles, ball. And <laughs> yeah, you get the gist, right? So now from here, it might be like someone gets the three, you've got your team lined up, and then everyone just rotates to their left. And you do that for one or two games. And I mean, we did that on, I saw that on Monday at our SPP session. Angus Burke took the warm up, they all looked half asleep, he did that, they're all giggling, they're all upbeat, they're ready to go. And that's the kind of logic behind it, all right, just to get them ready for practice. Now the other thing that I think can be really effective at practice is games are one on one or games are three on three. Now not like we're just gonna play 30 minutes of one on one or we're gonna play 30 minutes of three on three. It might be a quick five minute game here or a quick six minute game there. And once again, it's just to get, it's like a warm up. So blood flow, heart rate up, get them going, get them competing. 
So I think that's unbelievably important. Get them competing early to set the tone for practice so that when you progress into whatever you're doing next, well, their mind's switched on. They're ready to go, right? So once again, all these one-on-one -on -one games I've stolen. So the first one um, I call Cotter Hand Around. So I stole this off Damien Cotter. So the way to work, just give me two, so these two can stay, you guys jump off. Um, offense will start without the ball with their heels on the three-point line and the defense will start behind with the ball. Okay, so now you're gonna hand the ball around to the left side of him or to the right side, right? And then as you do, you're just gonna yell out left or right, and that's which foot will be his pivot foot, right? So if he hands it to and yells out right, right foot stuck on the floor, left foot can be your lead foot. I don't mind how you pivot. You wanna reverse or forward, it's up to you. Okay, now for the first game, we'll just go, as soon as he gets it and he faces the basket, I'll start counting down from five and then you've got five seconds to score, okay? Now, with your teams, add whatever constraints you want and then put in a scoring system that values whatever you think is important in the game. So with my under-14s team, I'm trying to get them to understand second effort plays. So we're big on offensive rebounding. Might not look like it on Sunday, but we try and be big on offensive rebounding, right? So an offensive rebound is worth two points and a made basket is worth one and you keep going until someone scores or gets a stop. All right, ready? Whenever you're ready. Right. Five, four, three, two, good. Score your keep, so go take it to a new spot. Quick, take it to a new spot. Three, two, you need the ball. Ready, go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Grab it, good, let's go. Rotate, last game. Five, four, three, two, one. Get the gist, right? Then another constraint, and it's, you, they can be whatever you want, but it might be a dribble limit. It might be you have to finish with your non-dominant hand. It might be you have to finish in the paint. It might be you have to finish outside the paint. Do whatever you want, but at the end of the day, if it makes them have to think, it's somewhat game-like, right? Because they're gonna have to think in a game, okay? Um, the next one, so both of you just start inside the no charge circle. So one, I've stolen a lot of stuff from a lot of people and two, I've just made up a lot of stuff. So I've taken like, I like this and I like that and I'm just gonna mush it together and make something that works for me, right? So this is just something I made up, let's see if it works, okay? So defense starts with the ball inside the no charge circle. Offense, you just start with your heels on the no charge circle facing a direction. All right, it doesn't always have to be the top. You might go to the wing or the corner, okay? Now, you're gonna throw the ball over his head. You want the ball to bounce. So let's say the second bounce, so when the second bounce of the ball, you want to be around the three-point line, okay? Once you throw it over his head, you've just gotta to touch the baseline with your foot before you can come back and guard him, all right? As soon as you see the ball go over your head, you chase it, grab it, pivot, and look to score, okay? All good? All right, let's go. Good, let's go, score you keep, go again, let's go. Okay, so now, for me, when I made this up, it was, well, I want my kids to get better at a contested catch like playing offense against a contested catch, which is majority of under 14's basketball. You never really get open, there's always someone on you. So now defensively, by the time he gets the ball, you want to be arm's distance away. And if you're not, your score goes down to zero, straight away, whatever you are on. So if it's first to three and you're on two, and you give him an uncontested catch, zero. All right, offense, you've only got two bounces to score. All right, whenever you're ready. Zero. Good, and again, think about the bounce. You want it to be a contested catch. Zero. Now, eventually, when their scores keep going down to zero, they'll start figuring out, well, maybe I just need to throw the ball a little bit higher or a little bit longer, right? So you want a contested catch. He's got to 
catch it, you've got to be arm's distance away. There we go. Go sprint, sprint, sprint. We'll give him that. Good. Perfect. So the idea is we want to create a weird kind of situation that might not necessarily happen in a game, but involves them having to think. All right? Now, I might do that for five minutes. Um, if I've got a whole court and some side rims, maybe that's good for my team. Um, if I'm sharing it with another team, maybe we can't do games of one-on-one. -on -one. But instead, it might be from here it's two-on-two, -two, or from here it's three-on-three. -three. So it could be a thing where, give me uh, four other players, please, quick. Let's go, um, just give me someone dark, so we can go lights and dark. So one light jump off, and then one dark step up. Just gonna show this once. Okay, so now go dark, you know, wing, top, wing, and then light, stand behind them. You guys are all facing the three-point line. All right, you're facing that way, you're facing that way, you're facing that way. Now, you guys on the inside, you can give the ball to whoever you want, and you can throw it in front of whoever you want. But whoever it gets thrown in front of, they've got to get the ball. You two other guys have to space. All right? Same rule. You can't look. Go, 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 touch the base. Good, space. Now we're playing. It's fine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right? And then you play out of whatever concepts that you want them to play out of. Maybe you're a pick and roll heavy team. So once they get the ball on the top, closest big's going to get into a ball screen. Maybe you're more of a motion team, so you get straight into your cutting action, right? It's just up to you, but I made that up. Um, so I'm you know, sure you guys could as well if you wanted to, but I just made that up, all right? Now, we'll move on to some actual drilling now. So this will be what I spoke about at the beginning about block, guided, one-on-one, -on -one, or random play. All right, so the first one is what I call high wing finishing series. So with the girls team that I'm coaching at the moment, we try and run a five out motion offense, right? And the, the phrasing for me is high, wide, and deep. So we play corner, what I call the high wing, uh, which is meant to be where I'm standing here, but with young kids it tends to be in here, right? So, bit of a challenge. And then the swing spot, which is up high, probably where the blue line is, and then high wing corner, right? So, I made up a little series that we put together to develop one-on-one -on -one offense from the high wing, okay? So, there's gonna be some footwork stuff that I'm gonna quickly do with them, um, which isn't necessarily part of the series but is then built into the series. So let's get, we can actually get a few of you guys up. So just give me, well, let's get all of you. And we'll go six basketballs. Or if we can get six. You're injured? Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. All right, two, four, six, eight, perfect, nine. All right, so just give me two lines, seam and seam, right? So the elbow extended to the blue line, elbow extended to the blue line. Right, and the balls all start at the front, except for let's say you just send your ball back, right? Because you'll be the first person. You good for that? Exuding confidence, love it. All right, so we're going to work on footwork, which I call a jump hop. So essentially, all it is, and I'm trying to take advantage of this new gather step or zero step thing. So I'm playing around with some stuff, but as the ball is in the air. I'm gonna jump off one foot, catch it, land on two. And then either onside step or cross step out of that, okay? So this is what we're going to do, all right? You're going to run to the elbow. They're gonna throw it in front of you, throw it in front, and you're gonna jump off one and jump, land on two. Perfect, good boy, all right? Now, from there, you're going to do what we call an onside step. So you're gonna dribble with your outside hand. Right, you have to dribble with your outside hand. So you guys, which hand are you gonna be dribbling with? Left. Left, you guys? Right, so if an onside step, right, if you're dribbling with your right hand, and I'm asking you to step with the same foot on the same side as that hand, what would that be? Right. Now if I said it was a cross step, and you're dribbling with your right hand, which foot are you going to step with? Left, 
right, where you'd be stepping across. So right now on the catch, it'll be on side step into a layup, okay? This doesn't have to be done at pace. Just get a feel for what it's like to jump hop and then from here, go on side step into a layup, okay? At your own pace. The rotations are like egg beater. So after you pass, go lay it up, now you're cutting. Pass, now you're cutting. Pass, now you're cutting. Right, and then you've got to sprint back, good. Move the ball, sprint to the back of the line, and then we keep moving and grooving that way. All right, so wait, we'll reset it now, now that we know the rotations. Do we have enough balls? Now come on bro, you gotta go first. You're at the front of the line. You're gonna have to go eventually, it's all good. All right, jump hop, jump hop, onside step into a layup. We'll go first person to two makes, go. So now we started with this for the first four weeks of practice, just to get the footwork right, because it isn't, I guess, how it's traditionally taught. So it took a long time for us. And what you'll see is that there's probably gonna be a lot of crossover steps and a lot of travels, right? So I'm gonna let him go for a bit and then we're gonna talk about the footwork. All right, freeze, 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 freeze. Does that feel weird for anyone? No, you guys are real comfortable with it? Oh, okay. Well, these are my observations, all right? So a lot of you are right-handed, correct? A lot of you are right-handed, which means you like to play off your left foot as your pivot foot, right? So what ends up happening is I'm asking you to do an onside step on this side, you'll catch, and then you'll step across with your right foot naturally. So right now, go at a speed that allows you to jump hop and onside step every time. And what I want you to try and nail is when you take this first step, we'll call it a dribble step. So when you take your dribble step, the ball's got to hit the floor the same time your foot does, right? And if we can go catch, one dribble, gather, one, two, into a layup, we're good. Sweet? Go for a few reps. Go, go, go. Onside step. Good. Good. All right, now cross step. Now it's a cross step. Now it's a cross step. Still dribbling with your outside hand. Now like I said, once again, this is something we did for weeks to get it right, and they're doing it for the first time, so I'm not gonna expect perfection. Good. All right, freeze. We're good, we're good, we're good. Any questions? You guys are good with that? Okay. So that's the footwork we're gonna play out of a lot today. Okay, now I need, give me uh, a line in the corner without a ball. And let's just have three guys there, all right? Give me a line where the edge of the key meets the baseline, and you'll have two basketballs, all right? And then we'll have elbow extended, because we don't need that one. Elbow extended, the blue line with a basketball. And I'll just use my drink bottle as a cone. All right. So this is what's gonna happen, all right? I'm gonna tell you where you need to end up going, so what the rotation is, after you've done whatever your thing is in the drill, right? So you will end up there. You will end up here. You will end up there. Rotating this way. All good? Okay. See this bottle? Well, it's meant to be a cone. You're gonna sprint, so you're gonna fill cut, and you're gonna get above what I call the high wing. And once you get here, you're now gonna to step towards the three point line. He's gonna throw, please don't throw it to me. I'm not a good player. He'll throw it in front, right? You'll jump hop, and then now you can either onside step or cross step into a layup, 
right? So let's just do that in slow-mo from here, all right? Good, freeze. Now after you pass, well, what's he doing? Is he driving it? Yeah. yeah. So now within your club or your team, you might have some concepts that you play out of um, on penetration. So receiver spots, right? And one of them, or the ones that we use at work uh, or at New South Wales is on penetration, we've got to fill a spot which we call the diagonal or the diag, which is essentially the wing. So on that drive, so now he's driving, you're going to cut to the diag and you're going to pass, like I said, don't pass me the ball, cut, you're following me, pass it to him. You're shooting the layup, you're shooting the jump shot. So go do that. Go, shoot, shoot the layup, shoot the jump shot. All right? That's all right, hey, 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 first one, that's all good, all right? Now, where did I tell you guys that you needed to end it up at? Okay, whoa, whoa, stop, come back. Where'd that ball go that he shot? Where did that ball go that he shot? Give him the ball, all right? So, it's here, all right? You get his rebound from the shot, then you run to the back of the line, all right? Where did I say you needed to go? Good, you sprint, where are you going? Good, you take the ball, you pass it to your buddy, you go to the back of the line, right? Now, the next person will, when the person in front has started driving, right? So after I've cut, I've got the catch, and I've started driving, the next person's lifting out of the corner. All right, all good? We go first person of three. If you score on the jump shot, you get a point. If you score on the drive, you get a point. Let's go two for the sake of the clinic. Ready, go. Now, you put the cone wherever you want to put the cone. You play out of whatever footwork you want to play out of. But this just gives me a bit of movement. It gives me footwork on a jump shot. It lets me play with receiver spots. It lets me get footwork on one-on-one -on -one offense. It gives me finishing at the rim. It gives me passing to a shooter. There's a fair bit going on here, right? Now, it's a lot, and if you're by yourself, it can be quite daunting. So if you're, you're the only coach and you do a drill like this where there's a lot of stuff going on, just pick two or three things that you're going to focus on. It's impossible for me to watch this whole thing and try and coach all of those skills that I just went through. So I might be talking about the jump hop, the footwork on the catch, and I'll leave it at that. All right, freeze. So one of the things that kids will do, and I'm sure you know this all too well, they'll try and sap the amount of time out of practice. So they'll just want to go at their own pace. I don't want to go quick. I don't want to get more repetitions. Right? It's just normal. They're kids. We're all the same. Um, so two things, right? The cut on the field cut has to be hard. A hard cut is a sprint, right? So this needs to be a sprint. When we rotate, that also has to be a sprint. So there can't be any walking or jogging, right? Whatever habits you, I'm sure I've heard this before, whatever habits you build at practice are the habits that they're gonna fall on in games. I saw it on Sunday. We, I don't get on my girls enough about sprinting in rotations. So when we score a layup in a game and I'm trying to run a press, balls in, you know, Jesse May gets a layup, whatever it is. <laughs> You know, ah, two points, we can't get a stop, right? So every repetition, sprint on the fill cut, sprint in the rotation. We're only going to two, all right? And let's say, go, 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 go. Good, go, sprint, good. Here we go, throw it in front, good job. All right, freeze. So now, they've got a feel for how the drill works. So the first time we do it, I'm not gonna be very pres prescriptive with the type of finish. I just want them to get how this works. Because what I think is really important with drilling, you don't just do it once, and then don't do it again for another three months. So label the drill, or the series, or the game, and do it a few times. So I made this up, right? But I'm gonna do this for about six weeks with my under 14s team. We train twice a week. Right? And we'll do this series at least once a week. So eventually when I say, all right, hey, high wing finishing series, boom, line, line, line. All right, now we're working this finish. Okay, so now the next finish. Now when you catch it, you've got to drive middle. Don't care what the footwork is, you can onside step or cross step, but you're driving middle. 
All right, now what we're simulating is, just come and guard me for a second. It's gonna be a difficult task, but jump in front, right? So I've caught it, right? I'm driving, he's staying on my hip, okay? I get deep in the paint. He still can't cut me off, but he's doing a great job of showing his hands and not fouling. I've gotta find a way to finish. If I turn my body, he'll block the shot, right? He's a great athlete. So now the finish that we're gonna work on is bounce, one, two, over the shoulder, high and soft. Right, that's all we're doing. The shot's still the same. All good? Three, two, one, go. Better pass. Good, high and soft, over the shoulder. Good boy. Know where the balls are going, we need one up top. Let's go now. Go, pass it, go, fill cut. Good, move it. All right, freeze, 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 freeze. It's bound to get messy, right? They've never done it before, but we get the gist, okay? Now, the next progression. Go cut, so he's, you've got him on the fill cut, pass him the ball, and let's even the lines while I'm talking. All right, so now you're driving, all right? So I'm riding his hip but I'm a better athlete, so I cut him off. Now what, how do you counter? What can you do? Spin move. Yeah, spin, yeah, move. spin move, all right, perfect. Yeah. So now you're gonna spin and finish. So gather, one, two, finish. That's the counter, or that's the progression. No defense. We're imagining this is a group that's never done that move before. So we're not gonna throw a dummy defender in. We want them to get a feel of what it's like to have to go bounce, one, two, into a layup, all right? What do you think's important when we do this? With the spin, what do you think's important? Yeah, what do you mean not land on both feet? So I go here, and then one, two, three. Well now there's not a travel anymore. So if I go bounce, one, two, we're good, with the new rule. All right, balance is important. All right, that's all I'm gonna say. Do you think it's better to be upright or a little bit lower when you spin? A little bit lower, right? So we just wanna be balanced. That's all I'm gonna say. You'll figure the rest out. Go, 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 go. Good, sprint the fill cut. Drive it. Corner, boys. Someone's gotta be in the corner. Yeah. We teach our kids if they're like exactly what Paul mm. did, jump stop, one step. Now that you're saying two, they're going off their wrong leg. Is that yeah. what you're trying to teach? Oh, look. Say, Don't go off your wrong leg. All right, good question. Freeze, pause, 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 pause. And I'll ask these guys, right? So they're 16s. Yeah. Whenever you drive down the right hand side of the court, right, and you lay it up, do you always jump off your left foot to finish? No. Why not? Yep, sometimes the defense, and, and that's the thing with the footwork there, right? It'd be great, like, and that's the thing, right? So if you're in your team or your club, you wanna do like this counter, that's fine. This isn't really like a, well, Basketball New South Wales says, really, this is my under 14 girls, City of Sydney Basketball Association team, like drills. Yep. So it's just, I want them to be able to have a counter and because the game will really dictate what type of foot or which foot or which hand you might have to finish with, I'm actually quite happy with them to do things that are uncomfortable and unnatural. So yeah, like I, I definitely teach like, you know, lay up, one, two, like shoot it with your right hand, jump off your left foot, because biomechanically that's what's normal and comfortable. But the best players, and like I said, I want them to develop a sound base, those best players, well, it doesn't matter which foot they jump off. They're just gonna get it done, and that's what this is working on. Like, we've got to counter because they've cut us off. We've got to find a way to counter and score. All right, good with that. All right, so let's see, we definitely don't need four guys there. Get a third guy in the corner. All right, now, this is where we throw in the dummy D. All right, and if you wanna do it as a coach, do it as a coach. Otherwise, get a kid. So I'm just gonna show them what it looks like with a dummy defender. I'm probably gonna get beat up. Um, and then I'll get one of the kids in, okay? So just fill cut, all right? Now, in a game, if I'm guarding you and I deny this, 
Good, we just back cut, right? So that's a read now. You just back cut, yeah. okay? If I let you catch it and I'm here, well, we just do the same thing. So throw it in front, jump hop, you're driving middle. Yep, drive it middle. I'll either stay on your hip or I'll cut you off. Okay. All right, you just make a read on me, yep. okay? Once again, it doesn't have to be you as the coach. You might throw a kid in. I'm just gonna let them see what it looks like. It might be a bit embarrassing, we'll soon find out, and then we'll get a kid in. Go. Good, let's go. He's driven it. Go on a two. Good, freeze. All right, so now, corner. So reset it, someone jump in and guard the cutter, right? Now remember with what we're doing, it's dummy defense, dummy defense. So like me, you're making it quite obvious what was happening. Flat out denial, let him back cut. We jump off, let me drive it middle, don't cut me off or cut me off, okay, go. Good. Who's in the corner? Good. All right, freeze. My fault, bound to happen, I stuffed it up. This guy's just staying on defense the whole time and he definitely doesn't want to do that. All right, so the added rotation, you go from offense to defense. Okay. All right, so when you were in the corner, as the shooter, which line did you go to? Which was the next spot? Good, oh, yeah. so I shoot it, so if I'm on offense, I shoot it, you get the rebound, go to the back of the line, I'm now the dummy defender. We're good with that. Let's just see a few rotations, go. Who's on D? Jump in, you're on D, go, 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 that's fine. O to D, O to D, O to D. Let's go, two more. All right, boom, perfect. Now, once again, coach whatever you value. So with me and my girls, it's we're jump hop. And I want that cut to be hard. The whole mindset of it is that I'm here and I'm running at you. Now I'm catching it with all this speed going straight at you and I'm driving it at your hip. Now, good luck trying to slide and get in front. And if you do and you cut me off, I'm gonna counter and go by you, right? And in under 14s, as I'm sure you can imagine, it's pretty messy, but like what under 14s game isn't messy, right? Even with good players, all right? So now we're gonna play. So now offense starts in the corner, right? Just give me, we only need like four guys, all right? Just so they can see it, we can get a few guys. So one, two, three, and then perfect, four. All right, so just come on the swing spot for me. All right, uh, you're guarding him in the corner, and then you can line up behind, all right? You guard him however you want, right? But the ball's there, okay? You're gonna cut from the corner to the high wing. Now I'm gonna move the bottle. But we're essentially just doing what we just did. Lift, guard him however you want. Now you're turning, going downhill, throw it, and we're playing one-on-one, -on -one. all right? So if you felt, and you're a proficient player, that he was here, what might be your read? Yeah, you shoot it, right? Now, what if you're not a player, so you can't shoot it? What could you do from here? Take a yeah, what might you do before you dribble it though? Yep, so you square up, he's here in a stance. What are you gonna to do to try and get me out of a stance? All over it, like you've got good friends. So you might shot fake, and he might lunge at you, or he might get out of a stance, then you attack. You guard him however you want, we're just playing one on one, all right? Offensive rebound is two points, made basket is one point. Go. Go, get downhill. Good. There you go, good job. Good counter. If you score, you stay. If you get a stop, you go on offense. You go passer to defense. 
Go, so now you're at the back. Go, 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 ball up top. Now, this is where I want to spend the bulk of my time. This. So, early on, like I said, the block practice, it might take a little bit longer. We've never done it before, all right? The guided defense, when we get into that next progression, when it's their first time, might take a little bit longer. But once they get the hang of it, we're getting into this, right? And it's not just one game of one-on-one, -on -one, someone gets three, then we're done. I want to try and play four or five games where someone wins. So we get multiple winners, they get lots of repetitions, and then while this is all happening, my assistant coach and myself, or if I didn't have an assistant, me, I'm walking around to the back of the line and I'm asking questions. Why'd you do that? What did you see? How could you do it better? Or how would you do it differently, right? But if you're gonna ask questions, you gotta be comfortable with whatever type of answer that they might give you. Unfortunately. And, and, you, and you've got to make sure there's no I don't knows. Rule those out. All right, good job, good job, good job. All right, so you're getting a bit of burn, all right? Now, that's how that would end, right? So we've got the one-on-one. -on -one. But I mean, if we really wanted to, and we do, we can get into two-on-two -two out of this. So you've got, well, I'll just show you. So now I'll pass. Oh, actually, one of you jump up just to be a passer. Both of you are in the corner, two of you guard. So one person guard one person in the corner, one person defend the other, all right? And you'll just jump up top on the swing spot as the passer. You're both going to fill cut to the high wing. He's gonna pass it to whoever he thinks is open, all right? When you get the catch, we're just playing two on two. You can guard them however you want, all right? On the catch, I'll give you eight seconds to score, go. Do that again. You want him to catch it. You want him to catch it as he's running down towards the three-point line. Go. Good. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, eight, seven, six. Good. All right. Now, that's one way of getting into two on two. You can do the same thing three on three, but someone guards the swing spot. Right, and then you, you coach shot selection. What's a good shot? What's a bad shot? Um, who is that a good shot for? Is it a good shot for you? Right, and then you coach the hell out of passing and decision making. Right, and with this live play, those questions become really important because there are gonna be times where they make a decision and they've got absolutely no idea why or they don't really know what they're supposed to be looking for. So that's when if you get the, well, I don't know, you can then give them a little nudge. Well, hey, you might want to look at the help defender on the low split or the captain spot. If they rotate across, what would you do? Oh, okay, well, they rotate across, then I pass it. So if they don't rotate across, what do you do? Oh, okay, well, I score, right? And then boom, you just let them go and you let them play. You let them figure it out for themselves, okay? Good job. Now, let's get six of you and you each need a ball. If you can, if possible. Quick. So give me short corner, short corner, foul line, and there'll be two people on each line. Two people. You've each got a ball. So two, jump over there. Oh, four, six, so short corner. Short corner, short corner. So move back, move back, good, block. And I mean, I guess to side note, and yeah, it's important, just make sure there's no balls on the baseline, otherwise someone might get hurt, all right? So now, the next series I call, or I made up the name, Patience in the Paint series, all right? Patience in the Paint, okay? So now, the first progression, right, or the first drill series, I'm gonna yell out two things, right or left, that'll be which hand you've gotta start dribbling with, and then a number between one to three. And that'll be the number of times that you guys have to scissor dribble between your legs. So if it's one, if I say right, one, there, and you're done, right? And you gather the ball in what I call a long and low stance, so you're here. If it's right, two, one, two, you gather, right? Good with that? Okay, now the first finish, Right, so let's say I yell out, 
right two. Show me that and then gather and hold. Go, right two. Good, no, 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 so now your feet, you're here. So go, get in that stance, good. Now you'll take two steps into a stride stop. So you've gathered, one, two, you'll pivot back and pass fake to your partner who's got a ball and you're not throwing it to him. Then you'll pivot back and finish on the rim. Just show me that from this position. Go. One, two. Okay. Now, <laughs> don't drag your pivot foot. Well, uh, I shouldn't say don't. Keep your pivot foot on the ground, right? So when you go one, two, and you pivot back, it's not that, right? It stays on the floor. And a lot of the time, the reason why they'll drag their pivot foot or move it is because they're upright and they're not balanced. Okay, so this is where I might throw in a constraint. You have to pivot with your hips down and you've got to fake with your hips down. If you don't, your score goes down to zero. So if you're on two and it's first to three and you get upright on the pivot or the fake, boom, back to zero. All right, now with this, it's first person to get it in. Gets the point. Once someone gets it in, you rotate to your left. Left one. Go, ready? Right three. Let's go, let's go. Sprint in our rotations. Left three. Oh. On the foul line, quick, quick, quick. Right two. All right, freeze. So now, you're gonna to have to coach the pivoting, right? So that's what happened when I did it for the first time with under 14 girls. We've done that, so that right, left, into a number, into different finishes. We've done that since the preseason started. It looks pretty good now, at practice. Now it's about trying to get more repetitions in live play and guided play to get us better so we've got better transfer into games, okay? So now, let's just say from here, the next finish, and I'll be on the baseline, right? Just go left one, and then hold that split stance with the ball, all right? From here, you'll take one step, jump, go. One step and jump, we call that a jump hop, right? You've got to pivot and fake until I jump. So I'm here. You pivot and fake until I jump. Go. Okay, we don't have to be robots. We don't have to do this the whole time. Right, you've got shot fakes. You can pass fake to anyone. It doesn't just have to be the line you came from. And then the moment I jump, and I'll jump on someone's fake. The moment I jump, it's first one to get it in. All right, so go back to the beginning. I'll have to hold the mic. I don't want it to fall out. Ready? Stance. Left three. Yeah. Ready? Let's go, let's go. Left one. Already jump. Ready? Right three. Good, good job, all right? Now, get the hang of it, right? You can put in whatever pivots you want, whatever fakes you want, you can add in whatever other finishes you want. It might be, have to be non-dominant hand, uh, must be off the backboard, can't be off the backboard, whatever you want, all right? Now, from here, we're gonna move this into uh, another game which I stole and then adapted to make it work for what I want. Who's done that, you know, it's called, I know it is cardinal two on one, where there's a line at halfway, sideline, halfway, sideline, um, sideline, baseline, sideline, baseline. You play two on one, whoever shoots it has to sprint to halfway, the other guys outlet it to the side, they kick it up the sideline, they skip past and they get into two on one again. Has anyone done that before? Or did I just say a whole heap of stuff? It. Oh, Will's done it, cool, they, Will's done it, all right? So, I like that drill, because I like playing two on one 
but it took too long. I couldn't get enough meaningful repetition. So all I did was I just shrunk it and I call it shrunken cardinal two on one because I'm a really creative person. All right, and it'll look like this. So go seam, seam, so elbow extended to the three point line. All right, short corner, short corner without a ball. All right, we only need one ball, so we'll use your ball. All right, let's roll the rest of the sideline off the baseline because we don't want anyone to roll their ankle or break their ankle. Cool, and then one person stand in the middle of the paint. All right, now you have to skip past to the opposite side before you can get into two on one. Okay, so throw it. Good, now you're playing, go two on one. Okay, now we'll talk about the constraints and what we want to get out of this. So come back, you're in the paint. Now, defensively for this person in this situation, we, is it easier for the offense um, if you run at the ball straight away? And I'm asking you, is it easier for the offense if you run at someone straight away? or if you're patient and you hedge to the ball and then you hedge back. Which one's gonna be more effective for you in this situation? Hedging. Hedging, good, right? So now we want these two to have to come close to you, okay? Perfect. Now, if and when, or when the ball gets below the block extended. So come, move forward, like you've passed it back and forth. He's done a good job hedging. Now you throw it, right, and he catches it. Just let him catch it. He catches it below the block extended. He has to fake and engage the defender before he can even think about passing or shooting, right? So if here you go shot fake and he doesn't move or he runs that way, well, what would you do from there? Yeah, you shoot it, right? If you get it there and you pass fake and he jumps on the pass fake, what makes sense? Yeah, you shoot it again, right? But if he stays, he smothers the ball on the pass fake or the shot fake, well now what do you do? Good, yep, pass to your teammate, your teammate should be open. All right, that's what we're doing, okay? So now whoever shoots it, you've got to touch the top of the key. Give me two more guys. Right here, seam and seam. All right, so let's say you shot it, shoot it. You've got to touch the top of the key, throw the ball to the side, Go to one side, you go to the other, throw it up, skip, and we're back into the same game. Now we're playing two and one again. So down, keep going, let's go at like 50%. Once it gets below the block, you've got a fake before you think about scoring or passing. It can be a pass fake or a shot fake. All right, we good with that? Okay, now let's do this thing at game pace. So let's have the excess players up top. We'll only ever want one person in the short corner. Quick, let's go, we sprint in our rotations. Ready, go. Go, sprint, sprint, you gotta defend. Whoever shot it, touch the top of the key. Good, figure it out. Good. Go, 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 go. Someone's gotta outlet it. Nope, that didn't go to anyone. Go, up the side, go, skip and we're in it. Guys, you're on the seams. Follow your pass, you're here. Come step in, you're on the scene. Good, few more, go, 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 few more. All right, freeze. So the reason why I want the, the pivot, the fake, it's not because I'm trying to simulate, and this is a conversation that we have with the team before we get into the drill. It's not that we're practicing our two-on-one transition offense. What I'm trying to get them to get better at is on this drive, right, if I can't score initially and I come to a two-foot stop or I come to a stride stop and this person is rotated across, well, I have to throw some sort of a fake or pivot to be able to keep the possession alive to find what, find what the next option is. Right, so you can progress this into whatever you want. It doesn't have to be two on one where you're coming down the seams. It might be a thing where you go two, two on one coming down, but there's a person standing in the corner. You pitch it to the corner, 
that person that's on defense closes out to the corner, you turn it into a game of one on one, right? That's just off the top of the head, right? But you can shape it to fit whatever you want, all right? Now, the next progression for me out of this is someone go uh, edge of the key, baseline, good. Someone defend him, all right? Now, give me defender, three point line, heels on the three point line. Give me offensive player with a ball. All right, now you guys just jump out. And where'd my water bottle go? Oh, there it is. All right, see this, uh, turn around, see this water bottle? Yep, it's gonna be sitting right here, okay? Now you've got the ball on his back. Stance, all right, your opposite, okay? Let's just say you rip and you drive middle. Let him beat you, all right? What are you doing if he drives this way? No, 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 sorry, what are you doing? Yep, you're gonna wheel underneath, all right? If he was to drive baseline, good, you're wheeling over the top, okay? You just guard them, okay? Now, when he goes, so when you feel the ball leave your back, you've gotta run around the water bottle before you can even think about defending. If your teammate does a hell of a job of slowing them down and make them have to pass it multiple times, it'll turn into a game of two on two. The offense has the advantage. I'm giving the offense the advantage on purpose. Now we're working decision making, passing, pivoting. All right, we're good with that. Yep, so you're on the split line. You got long arms, show me that great basketball stance. Athlete, there you go, go. Good, score you stay. Score you stay, score you stay. Go, 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 go again. Good. So the keep going, the instruction on the previous game, have to throw a fake before you even think about scoring or passing. Now he's a pretty good player, right? And maybe he just naturally does that. But ideally, in my mind, we would build to that with my under 14 girls so they might think about throwing a fake as they're taking their two steps and not necessarily having to come to a two foot stop to pivot and fake. And that's where I'm praising creativity. Great job, that's awesome, all right? When would we do a stride stop? When would we do a jump stop? That's when that questioning might come in. All right, let's go, let's go. Ball on his back, ball on his back. Basketball stance, go. Good, all right, perfect, all right? You let him go, you might have, I mean, like in a team situation, they're all up, they're all in, there's plenty of rest time, you get, to, you get across someone's flight path when they're at the back of the line, you ask them the question, boom, you go coach the next person, all right? Now, that could be the end of the series, but it's, we can make it whatever we want. So now, give me another one dark, one light. Yep, perfect, all right. So who's on offense, light or dark? Light. Okay, light. So let's start the exact same way, all right. One of you under the basket, one of you on the seam. Now, I'm gonna let you pick. You've just gotta to go to a corner. And I'm not fussed which one. Perfect, yep, and, and you just guard him however you think is appropriate. Now, I need you to start where? I'd probably want you to start below this hash mark, just for the sake of this breakdown, all right? And then you're on that wheel, okay? I'm not really gonna give you too much instruction. You just make whatever you think is the right read at the right time, all right, when he drives. Ready? All right, go. Cool, freeze. So now, there's a glaring thing that happened that should, well, that didn't happen that should have happened, right? We could either let it go, let him figure it out himself, we could let a player coach him, or if you feel like your players can't do that, then maybe you get across his flight path. But I'd probably give him another turn at letting him do what he just did, right? Instead of jumping straight down his throat and saying, no, you should have done that. Because I wanna give him the opportunity to go to the back of the line, see the next group go, Oh, okay, I was meant to do that. That's more effective, right? Who scored? Or who got a shot? Yeah. 
Okay. How did he get a shot? Okay. So maybe the first thing is you've got to see your man and the ball. Okay. Now, who's the only person on the court right now when he drives, right? He's running around the water bottle. He wheels. Who's the only person that can help on him? You, right? So now you make a decision whether you think you need a help or not, right? But what happens if you help? He's open. Now you make a read. What's a higher percentage shot? Him scoring a layup or him getting a catch on the three-point line? No, 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 you don't need to tell me, right? And I don't expect an answer, but I want you to think about it when the game starts. All right, ready? Go. Good. Perfect. And, and that might be a way that you start a three-on-three -three game. It, this, it doesn't have to be the end of this progression. You might say, I really like this. That might just be a way we get into three-on-three. Then you can start putting in a fourth player. You can put them in different floor spots. You might not have someone inside the basket or inside the key. You might have corner, corner up top, right? And it's, it's up to you, it's what you wanna work on. But for me, we're working, like I said, passing, pivoting, decision making, a bit of shooting, a bit of finishing, right? There's a lot going on, right? And even some one-on-one -on -one defense if it gets kicked out, okay? We'll just go one more repetition, all right? Keep going. Perfect. All right. All good? Good job. All right. Any questions with that? No? Okay. Perfect. You guys stay on the court. Okay. Give me, um, let's go one person on each block with a ball. All right. And then two lines, high wing, high wing. So probably about where I'm standing here. So two lines, high wing, high wing. Perfect, all right? Now, I guess we've worked a little bit on point of attack. So I've got the ball in my hands, right? Someone is closing out on me and we haven't really spoken about reads on closeouts. We've spoken a lot about pivoting, offensive footwork, some finishing around the rim, and some decision making associated with that. Right, but a big part of any level of basketball is when the ball goes, right, and this person's closing out, is how to make the appropriate read on that, the closeout, and how to attack it or make the right decision out of it. This happens a lot in junior basketball. What do a lot of young kids do in this situation? That happens a lot, so put it above your head. Travel, right? That happens. Or what you said, just catch, drive, when that might not necessarily be the right read. It might be the right read, but maybe you didn't need to go middle. Maybe you should have gone baseline. So what I'll start with is I'll teach them a very basic concept. Attack the high foot, on a closeout. So not that I would teach anyone to close out this way, but if I was to close out on you, and I ran and I led with this foot and this hand and did this, what would you do? Yeah, you drive it that way, right? Or if it was right foot, right hand, which way are you going? Good. So for a young group of girls or boys that have no idea about how to attack closeouts, I wanna make it quite obvious. Now this isn't block practice, it's a, it's a bit of block practice with the finishing, but it's decision making on, am I going middle, am I going base? If I did this with an older group, so if, this, if I was coaching this 16s team, the other decision making element that I would add in is if I had the ball, I passed it to you, and I closed you out here. So you've got what? Shot, or if you're, if you're not a great shooter, I'm sure you are, if you're not a great shooter, what do we speak about in the last drill? Shot fake, try and get me out of a stance, then you go by, all right? So now the way this will work, you'll both have the ball on the block, you're both gonna jump hop or cut to the three point line, they're gonna throw it, you're gonna jump hop. 
Now they're gonna follow and close out, and they're either going to close out right foot, right hand, or left foot, left hand. And you've got to attack the high foot and finish with a layup. Just show me, so we're all on the same page. All right, pass, close out, good, drive it. Now, if you closed out, you go to the back of the line. No, 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 leave the ball here, he needs it now. Good, now, you were on this side, right? You swing through to the opposite side, you swing through to the opposite side, same thing. Cut, jump, hop, close out, make it obvious, drive it, rotate out, rotate out, swing through, same thing. Pass, pass, cut, cut, jump, hop, good. Attack the high foot, make it obvious, right? Not like your coach has taught you, make it obvious, okay? Now, we'll go first to two, first to two. Okay? With this, it's inevitable that kids are gonna make mistakes. They're gonna drive it away, they're not supposed to drive it, right? But, like in a game, I'm not gonna, t I can't in a game say, stop, 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 stop. You didn't drive it the right way, go back. You gotta go middle, not baseline. Just let them figure it out, right? Wait till they get to the back of the line. Hey, which foot did they close out with? Okay, so which way would you go next time? Like, oh, you know, I needed to go middle. Boom, and then you're all good, all right? Ready? Go. Good. Go, swing through. You're meant to be at the back of the line. That's fine. Go, 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 go. Pass, close out. Back of the line. Good. Pass, one more. Last one. Okay. So now we throw me in. All right, or it's gonna be me now, but it could be a player, it could be your assistant coach. All right, so now pass. Pass, close out, okay? Now just, you're gonna operate in slow motion while I explain what's happening. I'm used to under 14 girls speed, you guys are gonna be a little bit quicker than my you know, 12 year old girls that I'm coaching, okay? So now, I'm the help defender, right? I'm on the low split. Now, if you were to drive Right, and I was to do this, well, what do you do? Yeah, good, you just keep going, all right? Now, if I was to rotate out, right, let's say I'm a big, and I call out, switch, 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 what are your options? Drop pass. Yeah, so you could drop pass, but for you to score. Half a minute score. Yep, yeah, so you could try and go by, what else? You're a step. So you could go by, or how might you take me away from the basket? Pompey. No, you've still got your dribble. Oh. I would hezzy. You would hezzy. <laughs> retreat. Oh, retreat. Make me come out. So make me have to close out, then go by. Right? So now you've got to make that read. If I run away from you, what do you do? Score. Score. Good. But if I call, switch, 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 and I rotate out, you can either hesitate and go by or drag me out from the basket. All good? But we've got to get this bit right. Read the close out. Go. Switch, 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 switch. Good, swing through, swing through, keep going. Go, swing through, make the pass. Read the close out. Switch, switch, switch. Go, swing through, swing through, swing through. Last one. Switch. Good, now, you make whatever counters, reads you want with that help defender. The last one that I did at a morning session, I just said, all right, well, I'm the big, you know, well, with the under 14 girls, it was I'm the big six foot coach, right? And I'm gonna step out and wall up. What type of finish could you make? And then the answer was, well, maybe I could shoot a running floater. So we played around with that, with 12 year old girls. Try and shoot it over me. And we spoke about teaching points, drive the knee up. We want it high and soft out of your hands. And we want the floater to go as high as the box behind the rim. Played around with it a little bit, all right? But you can make whatever you want. So that, for me, when I made this drill, that element is the BDT, the basketball decision-making training, right? They're making a read on me, they make a read on the closeout, okay? All good with that, okay. So now, go back, so reset the line. Oh, good. 
go into pairs. So pair like and like, that's fine. You two pair up, just find a partner. Anyone, all right? So we only need four. Two of you can jump out. Thank you, done a great job, all right? Uh, let's say you're both on either side of the three-point line, all right? And the person inside the three-point line will be on defense. The person outside will be on offense. Inside, and defense starts with the ball. Okay. okay. This side will go first, and then you guys will go. So I stole this off uh, another Canadian guy. They've got great stuff. Um, Chris Oliver, all right? So I named it after him. He used to coach at the University of Windsor. Um, so I call this Windsor Toss. So the way it works is you're going to pitter patter, all right? Throw the ball. On the catch, you've got to jump hop, all right? Catch, you shot fake, and then you pass it straight back. All right, now the second time, pitter patter, pass, jump hop, you don't need a shot fake. Just let me be you for a second, all right? On that pass, I've got to step across my body and touch the three-point line. As soon as I give it to you and I start this movement, you need to figure out which way you're gonna drop, good, right? Once I've touched it, I can defend. Offense has the advantage again, okay? okay? So now, let's say, and we'll operate at like 50% speed, this is the second one, right? I go, right? And I stay on your hip, right? What have we practiced? Go, keep going. What have we practiced? No, no, I haven't cut you off yet. I stay on your hip. What finish did we practice? Good, over the shoulder, right? If I cut you off, then what do we do? Spin. Spin yeah, good, right? And then you introduce whatever finishing you want to work on. Doesn't have to be those, but that's just what we've done. Okay, all good? Perfect. This, guy, this side first, then you guys will go after. Good. Go, 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 go. Next side. Rotate through. Good. Go. Ready? Up you get. It's on camera. It's alright. Whoa. Go. All right, so with young kids, so the girls that I'm coaching, with the footwork, I'm asking them, I'm being very deliberate. If you want to go left, you have to onside step. If you want to go right, you have to onside step. And the luxury is, because they've come to a two foot stop, well, they can pick whichever foot their pivot foot is. The idea in my mind is that once they progress, so they get to this age, I'll let them play out of their dominant foot. So if they're a righty and they jump hop and they want to play off their left foot, well if they're going to go right, they'll onside step. If they want to go left, they'll cross step. And you can already see when these guys are playing, that's what they naturally do. But from like a development perspective, with young kids, I want them to get an idea of how to play off both pivot foot. I think it makes them a little bit more versatile. Now, proof of being the pudding, it's still early days in the season, but we'll see how it goes. Now, from here, out of this, that's, this can be an entry to get into one-on-one -on -one or to get into two-on-two. -two. So the progression might be, just pass me the ball, Give me two lights, jump on. All right. Now, it starts here. You go stand wherever you want in this half court, knowing that you're attacking this basket. You go stand on this half court anywhere you want, knowing you're attacking that basket. You might stand under the basket. You might stand in the corner. Go wherever you want. Go, 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 quick. Defend them. You're on defense. You're on defense. All good? All right, ready? Go. Good. Good. Not bad, now rotate. Quick, rotate. Defense to offense. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, so now that's like 
whatever concepts you want to play out of, that's just a way to get into them. So with my 14 girls, oh, are you all right? Okay, big strong boy. Um, with my under 14 girls, it's quite basic. So with me, it's like, well, if you have the ball, you have to think score. So we don't want like the statue stance. Uh, we don't want to get on the back foot and hold the ball out here stance. You have to be aggressive and think score. But if you don't have the ball, I want you to think space. And for us in our team, space means corner, corner, high wing or swing spot. That's without even getting into like receiver spots. So when this person drives, we've got to move to these spots. I want them to understand spacing first. The next progression for me um, on penetration will be, just say this is the second pass, right? Good, and you drive. Uh, yeah, read the high foot. Good, so you drive. The next progression for me at a young age will be on the drive, you have to wrap, right? Which means you've just got to move. You can't stand still. So for you, it might be when he drives base, you're wrapping behind. For you on the weak side corner, when he drives base, you're wrapping up along the three point line, right? So let's try that, right? On a drive, you have to wrap, all right? So yeah, we'll do the whole thing again. So first one, good. Second one, good. Move it, drive, we wrap. That's fine, and we might coach shot selection out of that. Let's go again, go again, go again. Offense, go wherever you want. You don't have to start in that exact spot. I'm letting you pick what alignment you want to play out of. Good. Wrap. All right, we've got to stop the ball so we can show the coaches what it looks like to get a second pitch, a second, no, no, you're fine. You keep looking to score. It's like a little hint at the defense to rotate across and stop the ball. All right, you keep doing you, all right? Someone's got to stop the drive, right? Which will open up a kick out so we can get a second wrap. All right, ready, go. Good. So now, once again, right, like, and I think it's unbelievably important, and I try and do it with my young girls all the time, is coach the hell out of shot selection. Now, I don't know these guys. They could all be great. But there comes a time and place where it's like, well, we don't want all 10 players in our team letting it fly all the time, right? So in my team, well, I don't have anyone that has the green light. So we're all shot faking and driving. Maybe down the back end of the season, one or two girls, if we're lucky, have that green light, right? So really what it should look like, I'm not saying you guys, for my girls is it's constant penetrate, pitch, shot fake, drive, pitch, forcing a rotation, getting the wrap, so getting people open, forcing another close out, making a read on the close out, and then playing out of that. That's how I envision it in my mind. Now, it could be one of those things where it's like, looks really good on paper, but not that good at practice or on court, right? Um, have a seat, that was good, thanks guys. Now, 